Hello everyone. So in this section, we will talk about anesthesia for a patient with liver disease. Now patient with liver disease come for many surgeries and risk of intra-op complication and post-op morbidity and mortality is higher in these patients compared to general population. In this section, I would talk about how to uh, do a pre-operative evaluation of these patients, how to optimize these patients for before different kind of surgeries, whether it is surgery pertaining to liver like hepatic resection or surgery pertaining non-liver surgery, everything we will discuss. Now let us start our discussion, how do we do pre-operative evaluation and optimization of these patients. So pre-operative evaluation and optimization. So whenever we do a pre-anesthetic evaluation of any patient with not a known liver disease, how do we screen those patients for liver disease? By looking for sign and symptoms of liver related to liver disease. Do we use liver function test routinely for screening patient for liver disease? No, it is not recommended. So remember that for screening a patient with liver dysfunction, for liver dysfunction, we need to see the sign and symptoms during history and physical examination of that particular patient. So, I am writing here that pre-op history, pre-operative history should include, should include pre-operative history and physical examination of course, should include and physical examination should include symptoms and sign pertaining to liver disease should include symptoms and signs pertaining to liver disease pertaining to liver disease okay do we need to do LFTs on a regular basis? No. Routine LFT, routine LFTs for screening is not recommended. Liver function test for screening is not recommended, is not recommended, okay. So undue LFTs are not recommended. Now a patient with known liver disease, patient is coming who is a known case of liver disease. How do we evaluate that kind of person, patient? For patient with known liver disease, we need to take the history pertaining to the etiology of the liver disease, duration for which the disease is there present in the patient and also to look for the severity of the liver disease, okay? So, we need to take history regarding etiology, duration and severity of liver dysfunction, severity of liver dysfunction, okay. Risk stratification and optimization is the thing which we have to do in these patients with the help of history and physical examination. So, we need to do risk stratification. There are various scoring system which help us, validated scoring system which help us in assessing the risk, the risk associated with surgery in these patients. And we also have to see what are the associated conditions present in the patient we, which we can optimize prior to surgery. And optimization is what we have to focus on. So, risk stratification and optimization is what I will discuss in detail, which we do in pre-anesthetic evaluation of these patients. So, what they are the different scoring system for risk evaluation? First, when we take the history regarding the etiology, the duration and the severity of liver disease, there are certain liver dysfunction in which elective surgery should be deferred and the patient should be optimized, patient should be treated and then again a risk benefit ratio should be calculated and patient accordingly it should be decided the patient can be taken for surgery or not. So what are those clinical conditions in which the elective surgery is deferred? So we will we are talking about risk stratification and I am starting the discussion of risk stratification by telling you the certain liver disease 
in which elective surgery is deferred. So, condition considered contraindication for elective surgery. Acute condition like acute alcoholic hepatitis, acute liver failure, acute viral hepatitis, they are the contraindication for elective surgery. We need to first treat the patient, settle the patient, optimize the patient and then plan for surgery. Then child poo, when we, I will talk about the risk stratification, there is a risk stratification system child poo classification. If the patient belongs to the child poo class C, that is a sign of decompensated liver disease. It's a contraindication for elective surgery. So child poo class C, cirrhosis is contraindication for elective surgery. Then severe chronic hepatitis is a contraindication. Severe coagulopathy, patient having severe coagulopathy like the prothrombin time more than 3 seconds, then uh, the platelet count less than 50,000 in spite of giving vitamin K and op trying to optimize the patient, then again this is an, a contraindication for elective surgery. Then if patient have severe extra hepatic complications like patient is, is in hepatorenal syndrome or hepatopulmonary syndrome, depending upon the severity, again this is a contraindication for elective surgery, so, severe extra hepatic complication, acute renal failure, cardiomyopathy or heart failure and refractory hypoxemia, all these are contraindication for elective surgery. So remember, in these conditions, we optimize the patient. Once the optimization is fullest, we again carry risk benefit ratio and then plan whether the patient can be taken for surgery or not. So for elective surgery, we have to defer, optimize and replan. Now let us discuss some risk stratification system to assess the risk associated with surgery. The most popular one is child poo classification. Child poo classification. Child poo classification. Now this is a classification system which is used to assess risk associated in patients with liver disease for non-shunned surgery. So this was developed to assess risk associated with non-shunt surgery, non-shunt surgery in patient with liver disease, patient with liver dysfunction or liver disease, okay. Now, the child poo classification have three, uh, let us say three, uh, few parameters which are given a point between 1, 2 and 3 and after calculating the points, it is classified the child, it is classified into A, B and C, three group. So, we will discuss about it. So, what are the important parameters which comes under child poo classification? SITS, bilirubin, the serum bilirubin level, serum albumin level, prothrombin time or INR, the modified a child poo classification and classical child poo classification. In classical child poo classification, INR was considered. In modified, the prothrombin time was considered. Okay, and association of encephalopathy. So these are the five parameters which we have to, uh, which we have, which we use to calculate the score of child poo classification. So let us to first talk about the SITS. So if the patient has no ascites present, then we give the point 1, minimal ascites 2 and moderate ascites 3. Then serum bilirubin level, if it is less than 2 milligram per deciliter 1, between 2 to 3 milligram per deciliter 2 and above 3, it is given the point 3. Then talking about the albumin, more than 3.5 gram per deciliter of serum albumin level, then 1 between 2.8 to 3.5 gram per deciliter, right, then 2 and less than 2.8 gram per deciliter, then the point 3 is given. Then prothrombin time less than 4 seconds, 1, between 4 to 6, 2 and more than 6, 3. INR less than 1.7, between 1.7 to 2.3 and more than 2.3 is respectively given point 1, 2 and 3. And your encephalopathy, if it is not present, 1. If grade 1 or 1 to 2, 2. And grade 3 to 4, it is 0.3 is given. 
Now remember how to grade.